Curtis Sanders, speech class 1311, final exam, Jarvis Christian College. How many of you believe that the exclusionary rule is being violated across the country? Do you think that law enforcement officers are trampling all over our Fourth Amendment rights against unreasonable searches and seizures? For those of you who don't know what the exclusionary rule is, it's the result of an interpretation of the Fourth Amendment that prohibits the inclusion of any evidence obtained by law enforcement without articulable probable cause.
Uh, one uh, problem uh, we've had for many decades now with enforcing the Fourth Amendment is that the only remedy provided when the Fourth Amendment has been violated is excluding the evidence, which means if the Fourth Amendment rights of an innocent person have been violated, there's no remedy. Um, and as only does uh, your uh, legislation uh, try to address that, provide some remedies to enforce, you know, uh, to, you know, in, in case, uh, in, in case those uh, seizures that you're making illegal, in case they are made, not just by excluding the evidence, but also protecting innocent. Excellent, excellent comment, and you're exactly right. The United States has, has come up with the philosophy of the exclusionary which means if evidence is unlawfully seized on the Fourth Amendment, in a criminal case, that evidence is excluded, and government may not use that evidence if the judge determines that it was unlawfully seized, whether it's Fourth Amendment or whether it's a confession, any unlawful. That's the remedy under our law. I think your point is well taken. As we move forward on EPCA, there has to be some other remedy besides exclusion as to what we do with that information. Certainly, I think we ought to eliminate that information if it's unlawfully uh, obtained. Uh, but we need to have that debate and that discussion. I don't know the exact answer on what it should be, but it should be something else besides uh, if the evidence is excluded. That doesn't help the individual who's the innocent person out there. It may help Bobby Oglethorpe and Holly Oglethorpe, but it doesn't help the innocent person whose information was seized and is still stored by government. Good point. We need to add that into legislation before it gets uh, uh, out of our committee. One more question, or are we done? Of course, there are exceptions, like exigent circumstances. In the case of Arkansas versus Sanders, Plain View, Arizona versus Hicks, 1987. And when a search is conducted under the belief by an officer that it is in good faith. In other words, the good faith exception, as in the case of the United States versus Leon. Most African Americans think that if they just quietly go along with whatever law enforcement officers want, everything will be fine and they will be allowed to go on the way. To that I say, get your heads out of the clouds. Stop smoking. Violations of the exclusionary rule targets those persons in society who are economically disadvantaged the most and makes them feel even more powerless. The failure to adhere to the exclusionary rule and throw out fruits of the poisonous tree, which were illegally obtained, weakens the judiciary's integrity and subverts our laws. According to Legal Information Institute Cornell Law School, the exclusionary rule prevents governments from using evidence obtained which violates the U.S. Constitution. Despite our previous Attorney General being Black, Loretta Lynch, the judiciary still treats African Americans unfairly when it comes down to the rights afforded through the Fourth Amendment. It is my firmest belief that education of the law is the best option. Ignorance of the law is no excuse to allow anyone to search you without articulable 